Hey folks, this is Riker, bringing you five simple ways that Diablo 3 could be made into an even better game. With patch 2.4, Diablo 3 is in a great place. Ever since patch 2.3, the game has been better than it's ever been before, and certainly infinitely better than it was on first launch in 2012. But there's always room for improvement, and here are five simple things that Blizzard can do to make Diablo 3 an even better experience for players. Number one. We need an easy way to swap builds. Now we're starting with what is actually gonna be the most difficult thing for Blizzard to implement, but this is by far the most needed change that has to happen for players. Because the game is in a great state, there's a number of different viable builds. And even barring that, the build that you'll use for pushing greater rifts is gonna be different from the build you're gonna use for farming death's breaths in normal rifts. There's a number of reasons to have more than one build. And right now, changing between your builds is a laborious, time-consuming process. You have to swap your gear, you have to swap your legendary gems, you have to swap your Kanai's cube items, you have to swap your skills. And everyone's had that moment where their friends are inviting them into a greater rift and they gotta say, hold on guys, just let me swap my gear real quick here. And they feel rushed and they're trying not to make their friends wait. And they think they're done, they hop into the greater rift and then shit, I forgot my legendary gems, or shit, I forgot my passives, or shit, my Kanai's cube items. It's ridiculous that currently the easiest way to have a separate build is to have an entirely separate character. Now, Diablo 3 Community MVP Monstrous made a mock-up of a certain system that could allow for build swapping. You can find a link to that in the video description, but basically it's an armor rack that you place in town, you click on it, it opens up a UI element, and it allows you to set up multiple different builds in there. I love the system, but the added UI elements mean that Blizzard will have to take a lot more time to implement this. So my idea for just the quickest possible and easiest implementation for Blizzard would be a simple one-click system with no UI element whatsoever. You click on the armor rack, and it sends all of your currently equipped items into the armor rack and equips on your body whatever was on the armor rack. So the first time you do this, you'll be completely naked after you click the armor rack. But every other time you click it, it's gonna swap whatever gear is on the armor rack for the gear that you have equipped. Similarly with your skills and Kanai's cube items. It's gonna snapshot all that, save it in the armor rack. The next time you click it, it's gonna swap what you currently have for what's in the armor rack. Super simple, super straightforward. No added work for the art team, no added work for the UI team, but certainly some work for the programming team. The next four changes will be a lot easier for Blizzard to implement. So let's move on to number two. Bounties should be made viable for solo players. Currently, split bounty farming in multiplayer games is so much more efficient than farming bounties by yourself. Split bounty farming means you join a game of four people and every person goes off to complete a bounty on their own. Knowing that you could be farming your bounties four times faster if you're in a multiplayer game makes it grueling to run bounties by yourself. One simple solution is to reduce the number of bounties that a solo player needs to complete. I've seen a couple different systems proposed on Reddit. The first being that the number of bounties that need to be completed equals the number of players plus one. But I also saw a strong mathematics-based counter-argument for why it should be number of players plus two, up to a maximum of five. And I won't go into specifics, but I will link those threads in the description below if you want to read them. But basically, a solo player should not have to complete as many bounties as an entire party. Alternatively, maybe a solo player can be rewarded more bounty materials per Haradric Cash than a group would. Number 3. Follower Toughness Either the token that renders followers invulnerable should be made default, or follower toughness really needs a rework, because right now, if you're pushing the higher greater rifts, there is no token that you can possibly use other than the token that renders the follower invulnerable. The other tokens are interesting and fun, but they're useless if your follower is dead most of the time. Where we could potentially have diversity and interesting options, we're just stuck with using one token all the time. And now that you can upgrade tokens in Kanai's cube, farming for the follower can't die token is trivial, rendering the other tokens absolutely redundant. One option is just to make followers flat out invulnerable. Remove that token and maybe introduce some more interesting tokens. Alternatively, somehow increase their toughness or make their toughness scale with greater rift level so that we then have to choose, do we want to make our follower invulnerable or do we want to use one of these other tokens? Number four, 
Move the new Paragon Point icon. This is a super simple user interface change. Currently, the new Paragon Point button rests directly over the middle of your buff bar. Is it the end of the world? No, but if you're pushing a greater rift, then you don't want to have to bother with annoying workarounds like pressing PP to bring up and hide the Paragon menu when that fraction of a second could actually cost you the greater rift. There's no reason that can't be moved up just a few more millimeters so that it doesn't cover up any of your buffs. And number five, add drop shadows to stacks. There are some stack numbers that are just completely illegible or very difficult to read at quick glance due to the color of the number clashing with the color on which it's overlaid. A simple drop shadow would make that number pop. There should never be any confusion as to how many Taeguk stacks I have. So those are our five quick fixes, but I will state that there is a greater discussion that needs to be had about the Paragon Point system, which ties into botting. There is no easy fix for that, but there is a problem, and we're going to have a more extended discussion on that point in the future. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment letting me know what you would do to improve Diablo 3. Check out these other videos. And if you enjoyed this one, share with friends, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders. Uh, it's not a man purse. It's called a satchel. Indiana Jones wears one. To find out how you can get me to say something random at the end of my videos, check out my Patreon rewards.